This is an interactive program where we discuss optometry topics. And today we have Mr. Puneet, who is going to talk on the topic mantras of successful entrepreneurship in optometry. First of all, I would like to give a small introduction about him. Mr. Puneet has a bachelor's degree in clinical optometry from Amity University. He is currently serving as co-founder and CEO at CureC Vision Therapy Solutions and as Vision Therapy Consultant at Cure for Eyes Gurugram. He has also developed a mobile app, OptoCal, during the second year of B-Optum to help practitioners in contact lens calculations and transpositions. He has also received Appreciation letter from OCI for conducting various awareness projects. On behalf of IWIT's team, I would like to welcome you, sir. Thank you, Manashvi. Thank you for the introduction and all your love. Just let me know if the screen is visible now. Uh, yes, sir, the screen is visible. So uh, we shall start the session now. Again, kindly requesting everyone to please mute your microphones and any questions that you have can be typed in the um, conversation box and we will discuss them later after the session is over. Shall we start, sir? Yes, definitely. Okay, sir. So good afternoon, everyone. It is kind of a lazy Monday morning. So let's start and learn about mantras for successful entrepreneurship in optometry. We all are optometrists, but we are not yet aware about entrepreneurship. We hear this word all around us, but we are not much aware of it. So let's see what it has and what we can do in this via optometry. So I'll begin with financial disclosure. I have no financial interest attached to this presentation and I have no conflicts of interest with this either. So as many of you can't see me right now, I have put a picture of me just so you can interact with me. I am Optum Puneet, co-founder and CEO QC. So if you are an optometrist and wish to start your entrepreneurship journey, this guy is for you. Why? Because earlier I thought I'll just compile some Google ideas and then I'll say, okay, this is for entrepreneurship. This is all you need to do. These are the skills you need to possess. But no, that's not the answer. I thought that I should include whatever I faced in my practical journey when I began and till where I've reached, I should share that with you so that you all can see what are the practical real life world problems that you face in a startup, in an entrepreneurship journey. So let's begin with the very basics. What is entrepreneurship? We should be clear with this first. Entrepreneurship is the ability and readiness to develop, organize, and run a business enterprise along with any of its uncertainties in order to make a profit. See, when I say uncertainties, it counts risk. There are risks attached to each and every business. Suppose now we are facing a pandemic called COVID. In this, many businesses are being shut down. But if they have planned for it beforehand, they must be working very hard and they must be working from home either. So they can survive this. So there are a chances of risk also, but there are chances of success also. Entrepreneur is the one who looks out for the positive aspects always and then organize, develop and run a business enterprise. In more simpler terms, the more modern entrepreneurship is all about transforming the world by solving big issues. Earlier it was only related to, okay, you are doing business that will be counted as startup, but nowadays it's not. Why? because nowadays the entrepreneurship has changed its definition from the previous one. What it includes now is that you should be solving a bigger problem, the real world problems. Uh, suppose when we take the example of Elon Musk, Elon Musk was facing a difficulty. He, uh, he was fascinating about uh, stars and rocket and life on Mars either. Then what he did instead of joining NASA, instead of uh, following all those protocols and programs, he thought, okay, why not I do this? If nobody else is doing it, I should be doing this. I should take the lead and do this. So it is all about solving the bigger issues in the world, in the real world. Only then you qualify as a startup and an entrepreneur. So who's an entrepreneur? An individual who sees a problem on the planet and immediately focuses on clearing a, uh, focusing on clearing a answer. So it will always provide you with an answer no matter what the problem is. It will not uh, cry out like, okay, I'm facing this problem. No, 
it will always come up with answers with possibilities and solutions as i say entrepreneurs see possibilities and solutions where the average man only sees annoyances and problems suppose when we take the example of swiggy's founder what was the problem he was facing he was saying okay i want my food delivered at uh, at night around 12 o'clock but the restaurants are closed even if they are running they are not providing delivery what shall i do he got the problem if there was some other regular person he said okay i'll just sleep and uh, see what we can do next day i'll eat next day or i'll postpone the program or i'll just go for a walk and then think what we can do but that found what he did he took this problem and created a solution for it instantly okay why not we create a online portal where the deliveries will happen so that is how you convert a problem into a solution and that's when you become an entrepreneur the moment you come up with a solution that's the moment you are an entrepreneur this is a very famous quote entrepreneur is the one who jumps off the cliff and builds a plane on the way down so nobody is ever ready nobody is ever perfect to start a startup it's always about the risk it's all about about the steps that you take which takes you either to success or to failure even failure is not a bad thing it teaches you but if you go with right approach you will definitely reach success in the coming up slides i'll show you what i mean by success so what is the recipe of an ideal entrepreneurship an ideal entrepreneurship should include a visionary leader leadership is the main aspect of each and every business in the world then the second one comes up is innovative idea the idea should be innovative and solving a problem if the idea is not innovative much it will be replaced very soon somebody else will come up with an innovative idea and your business will be shut down that moment only next perseverance and flexibility when i say perseverance i mean that there will be times the business will be down the startup will be down you won't be uh, making much of success you will be facing problems the whole world will appear shut down to you but you have to keep moving you have to keep moving forward and only then you can reach to the sunlight when you face the darkness only then you can see the light so it is necessary but you should not quit you should never quit and you should keep on persevering and next is flexibility what i mean by flexibility is people are not ready to accept change but we see that our world is rapid the world is moving at a faster pace so it needs new things it needs new things every day so if you don't change with time uh, suppose we consider an example of nokia nokia did not change with time and then what happened it got diluted it was in, uh, entirely devastated and in the same time in the same era you cannot blame the time in the same era apple flourished samsung flourished why because they accepted the changes they accepted the feedback that they got from the market while everybody else was saying okay we need this feature we need this feature nokia was not nokia was not improving in that and the, all the other manufacturers took that feedback positively and worked on it so they improved it and they finally got away to the success whereas nokia diluted in the same way perseverance and flexibility is very much of importance to everyone next is adaptability in real world uh, i have been to many pitch deck session many startup sessions so there people come up with ideas they say okay we have a problem and now we have created the solution fine you have created the solution but is the problem this big because the adaptability in real world is a issue they come up with problem okay i will convert hydrogen into nitrogen no that's not the answer we don't need this just look out for what we need what are the real world problems and solve those only it's adaptability in real world how easily it could be adapted by everyone how easy it is to adapt so uh, suppose we all can use facebook easily earlier earlier there were platforms such as orkut which was now replaced why because it was not so easy to use and it, again i'll come to the point of flexibility it did not change with the time and the last one is marketing and public relations well once a startup is live once it uh, gets formed and it's working now now the life and the heart of the startup is marketing and public relations so we have to improve public relations and if you see any of the corporate around you you'll always say good about him why because he is trained into public relations he knows how to communicate he knows how to speak with people he knows how to maintain relationship so that's why 
marketing is the core of any business marketing is like uh, you are displaying what we have got for you you are showing care for the customer and for the patient suppose we take a scenario which is setting up an optometry practice so on the left hand side i have stated what all is essential to start you require funds then you require a good location location with visibility and a good footfall of patients right and the third one is staff or manpower you need staff for accounting for ca purposes and for cleaning and some other staff and obviously the professional skill staff which includes the optometrists also now the last one is but it is the most important one i have kept it in the last but this is the most important one this is the instrument suppose you don't have a chair unit how are we going to set up an optometric practice if we are not having adequate instruments it will shut down so we need to have instruments funds locations and staff these are the essentials of any optometric practice now okay listen these are the essential i have this essential and some other person also has this essential we both set up our optometric practice side by side okay so what makes my practice flourish and his not is that i provide professional skills whenever the patient arrives to me i provide him with the best he could achieve next point i have stated is usp what is usp this is unique selling proposition what is the point what is that thing which only you could provide there might be some gap in the market look for that always sit with the patient in some other clinic you will see them complaining about something or some other thing okay so the same hospital did not take the feedback positively they never listen to the patient you just go sit with the patient and realize what are they talking about what all are, are the negative points what you have to do is easily convert them into your positive point suppose they are saying that okay this hospital is not so active at working it's always uh, it always keeps us waiting at the reception and never actually get appointment until this one hour so what you do you just say okay i have 5 minutes uh, time waiting only then your obviously your uh, optometric practice will flourish and the footfall will increase next is referral system what i mean by referral system is that suppose you have one patient okay on the first day you got one patient only and on that patient you uh, tried all your professional skills you gave all your features and all the services the patient was quite happy now what you have to do is always and always take the feedback of that patient why because that patient each and every patient is your referral system if he gets cured if he gets his treatment if he gets satisfaction from you he will recommend you to 10 other people for sure his family and friends included okay so referral system is the thing that separates you from the rest next one which comes is digitization and marketing why am i focusing on digitization on digitization i mean we should not Uh, be running through papers okay i'm uh, i have to cut your receipt time to enter your credential it will only take time and make your practice slow you have to digitize you have to go to newer methods newer ways even the patient is excited to see this suppose you go to a physician one physician is noting also okay what have you got fever you will just take this medicine and go you will not take him as credible as the one who sends you a printed prescription this is the truth and next one is marketing so in marketing it is not just okay we have to put up banners holdings no nowadays suppose everybody is stuck at home everybody is stuck in this lockdown situation so what you could do is we need to get social media marketing search engine marketing so that whenever anybody searches for anything related to us your name will appear at first so there are methods to do that there are people specialized in digital marketing they will do that it will not cost too much and the main benefit is it will only be shown to the people who are really interested or who are actually your customer or actually your patients not it will not be wasted any single penny will not be wasted in digital marketing suppose we put up a holding the same holding is been seen by 70 years person and the same holding is been seen by a 5 years person so no you can set a age limit you can set the interest you can set everything each and every characteristic of patient that you need only they will be able to see the your marketing skills and your posts so these these are the skills that separates you from the rest 
Everybody gets the essential. Obviously, essentials are necessary to set up any optometry practice, but these are the ones that you require to excel and to grow your optometry practice further. So, as I said, to grow your optometry practice, what all you need? First and foremost, is you have to provide services of excellence. There should be no compromise of any patient. Suppose you see, okay, this patient is having a complaint of floaters. I have seen the fundus. It's it looks like diabetic retinopathy. What should I do? I'll uh, prescribe the drugs and they will go home. No, that's not the matter. Always go for what's best, best for the patient. Despite it's available to you or not. If not, you have to refer it to the uh, reliable person, to anybody you are in connection with. That's why I'll be saying to connect with fellow professionals. Suppose you have an ophthalmologist in touch with you or a retina specialist in touch with you. You will definitely refer the patient there. He will get examined there and he will come back to you obviously because why because you sent him there and now he has gained your trust okay so if he trusts you he'll come back again for sure because he knows you'll do only what's right for him now the second point is be seen always what i mean by be seen always is you have to appear appear in everything around the patients around your own professionals you have to be appearing you have to set out newspaper ads, you have to uh, conduct webinars, conduct lectures, appear in holdings and all around area reach and you can include flyers and pamphlets also so that everybody knows, okay, there's a good practitioner around there who, who can check my eye and who's the competent person for that. Now, the third point is connect with fellow professionals. With fellow professionals, I do not mean only the IK ones. You can include the dentist, the physiotherapist, so anybody who's associated with healthcare. Why? Because uh, suppose there's a physician, a patient goes there, the patient is not knowing he is, has to go to a specialist or not. The condition is such, the people are such. So what will he do? If he, if he is in touch with you, he will send that patient to you always. And you have to give feedback to that professional. You have to be... Uh, Maintain a relationship with that professional so that you will work seamlessly and your practice will flourish always. You send your patients for that professional and that professional will send you always. Now this fourth point, which is take feedback always. As I all earlier said, each patient is important and you have to take feedback from each patient. Only then you could know what are the points you need to work upon. And never take these feedback for granted. These are in fact the feed forwards you should always ponder upon them that what i need to do further what do we need to improve and you should just sit around for a time and look at all of them okay this is the thing they are saying we should improve this okay so next i have uh, created a second scene in which we are setting up a corporate optometry service i have kept it separate because it's different than setting up a optometry practice individually it is setting up a corporate optometry service because we are uh, providing services pan india or uh, pan the world look it's all upon the now to start what all you require you require funds again then you require a good location why good location location to maintain your staff the staff will be there the, suppose you are a manufacturer of contact lenses then you need to set up machines you need to have some staff you need to uh, see uh, how accounts is going and all the staff will be set there and so that you can manage them easily and can see what's happening around there. Then you need the manpower obviously to run all the processes. Then the next and the most important point is a problem solving idea. That is very much important for any corporate service. Suppose there are n number of contact lenses. If there comes a contact lenses, which says, okay, uh, you just wear this and your mic will be controlled within two months. Okay, then this is having a good, he is solving a problem of myopia and he has a good exposure and he'll flourish very easily. Why? Because he solved the problem. We should always focus on a problem solving idea. That is what makes you separated from the rest. Now, these are the essential ones to start optometry service. But to excel in corporates, what you need to do? You need to have the best public relations skills. You need to interact with each and every of your doctor, optometrist, patients with so seamlessly that they should not think you are having any efforts. They should always greet you positively then. Next one again comes is USP, Unique Selling Proposition. 
there should be something which is unique about you which is unique about your company only which is unique about your service that only you could provide that nobody else is doing that and mark my words usp gets replaced very very easily suppose the next day you come up that okay i'm doing i test in 5 minutes only somebody else will also come up saying oh, i will do i test in 4 minutes only so you have to look at the next usp before you post the first one you said i am doing a refraction within 5 minutes and i'll post the patient within 5 minutes i will not make the patient wait then you should always come up with second usp so that it is not easy to compete by others also you should not focus on what others are doing we should never compete if the other person competes that's fine that's his choice we cannot change that but we should not be competing with anyone we should be focusing on ourselves only then we can improve ourselves we should focus what's the best we could provide to our patient and how we can do that by looking at all the feedbacks next one is innovation and flexibility innovation is the key as i say and we need to keep changing we need to keep moving we need to keep going to a newer and newer choice suppose there were a uh, cathode ray tube crt monitors the big tvs around you have must have seen around your house so they must have kept like this okay these are selling in good numbers we should keep selling this only but no there's uh, there's an innovation somebody came up with lcds then leds then the curved monitors so there is innovation because the one who changes the one who changes with time will only be in business all the others will be gone that's the meaning of flexibility you should be accepting changes you should not stick to any one thing you should innovate always and always even in my startup most of our revenue goes to research and development alone why because we are always focusing on what we can provide next to the patient what the patient needs next what's the best we could do for them and the next and the last one is digitization and marketing as i always said digital marketing is the key and you have to digitize all your processes even if you are not at office you are not there the process should not be stopping it should run seamlessly with or without you only then you can have a happy retirement otherwise you'll be working all your life now i have talked about setting up optometry practice setting up main and foremost point is how to find money how to find money so how to get funds everybody needs funds for a startup because we are, we need as i said in the essentials we need office space we need location we need then uh, some staff we have to hire and the manpower then we need to has some furniture and the interior and all the costs are included when we see we need to buy the stocks also so then how shall we gather the funds the funds can be gathered by two ways i'll go to the loan one first under the loan there comes the first one which is loan from bank so bank usually provides you a personal loan and professional loan and business loan so personal loan is the easiest one if you are a good customer and been to the bank for last few years the bank will not ask you any question will take only one nominee and grant you with a personal loan of depending on the your recent transactions and how much they think they can recover from you they will provide you personal loan seamlessly next one is professional loan the moment the, you tell them that i am an optometrist i am a healthcare professional i want to set up my practice i have to set up my clinic then they'll think okay this is a professional he is going to set up his own clinic he shall surely return my loan and then he will take you under professional loan under professional loan you have many relaxations in tax also so you have to sit down with your ca and then you have to decide which one i have to go for now the third one is business loan business loan is usually quite uh, big in interest because the amount is also larger but business loan is taken when your uh, business is at a good position at a good stage you are flourishing so that you know you will recover that easily and the next one is you when you need to borrow money from friends or family suppose you need funds of 5 lakhs okay you talk to your parents you talk to your friends you somehow gather 5 lakhs and then you started it so it won't be a pressure on you you can return to them easily and what i personally think is the interest rate won't be as much as the bank also so that's the benefit of having 
uh, loan from friends and family so first choice should be always from friends and family then you could shift uh, towards bank if you think that's not my thing now the next question is investors everybody is so fascinated about investors investing uh, getting investments how to get funds investors sounds good sounds very good to you but uh, what all it takes the loan the loan only takes you interest okay they have given you x amount of money they will uh, then uh, then return back x plus y amount of money only then their case is fully shut they have nothing to do with your business even if you are taking money from your friends and family you return that money and then you are completely separated you can easily do whatever you want to do they don't have anything to interfere with you but when it comes to investing what they will do they will uh, have your shares also so they will be your sharing partners they will invest the money as much as you want you say i need 4 crores they will invest 4 crores to you instantly depending upon your various proposition that i will share in next but the thing they take is ownership they will take okay i need 20% sharing i need 30% sharing so they know that when you flourish when you reach that mark that uh, suppose they have invested 10 crores in you so when they think your value is of 100 crores they will then sell their proposition to someone else their shares to someone else for a good amount of money and what will happen your shares will be diluted always and always with time as a, if i give you example there was a founder of flipkart the two co-founders ultimately quit flipkart the founder itself left flipkart why because the investors were such that there was a huge share to them only and only 2% was shared to them so they quit and then it was being continued by the investors the idea was theirs but they are now sitting at home so i usually don't recommend investment because it is your passion it is your idea it is your thing you should do this and you know how to flourish you don't need hefty amount of money always it's never about the money it's all about how you use your current resources so under investors also we have two categories first one is angel investors who are angel investors these are individualized investors suppose uh, x a person known named x has some amount of money he wants to invest he wants to make that money greater so he will come to you talk with you and then invest with you he will be a single party okay and in the case of a venture capitalist it will be a company there is a company uh, suppose its name is abc international abc wants to invest 2 crores in you so that it can take around 200 crores back which is uh, because there's a whole company running they need the funds for them also instead of the investor investor is uh, the angel investor is the best choice under investors because he is happy with whatever he is getting he is uh, sharing his own money but in the way venture capitalists they take up money from somebody else they guarantee them some propositions and then they will come to you they will take some money from you and it will happen now so first choice should always be from friends and family only if the, that is not working under any condition then you should shift to loan loan from bank and if that is not working then you should shift to investors under investors also first you should be looking for angel investors only after that if you think you are not getting any angel investor somehow due to any reason then you can shift towards venture capitalist that is a whole firm working in investment sectors only now how to get investment okay we read about it now what is the thing the investors look for in they look for a great business model how are you going to generate revenue how are they going to get their money back remember they are putting their money to get their money multiplied and returned so they need to know how are you going to uh, generate revenue and give their money back so first and the foremost important is your business model they will often interfere you also that no you need to develop this no you need to keep the prices like this or that it will be increasing at a rapid rate but it's all your decision until and un unless you get their investment after their investment they are your sharing partners <laughs> and under the board meetings you have to share whatever the revenue you are getting next one is your team and its vision your team is very much important they will look for a passionate team behind any idea a good idea with a slow team will be uh, left behind by a good team with a not so good idea why because uh, the passionate people can make it happen 
the people with vision can make it happen only and the third point is your current state of business why your current stage of business everybody invest money where they think okay it is already running it is already generating a good amount of revenue if suppose i go to them saying okay i have this idea of uh, generating this much amount of electricity they will say are you having any business running or anything running i'll say no so why would they invest think from their perspective only so they need to have some guarantee they need to see your current figures so the later you uh, take investment the more it will be for you suppose currently if you go for investment with, with just your idea they say okay you will get 5 lakhs investment with the uh, one year later you say okay i am generating this amount of revenue it will surely go towards 15 immediately it will be three times immediately the moment you are running your business independently then there comes a thing called bootstrapping what is bootstrapping is whatever money you are generating whatever revenue you are getting you have to invest that into the startup only for the first 6 month or 1 year forget about your salary forget about your expenses it is only and only liability for the business or for the startup you need to invest all the money into the startup to make that great once they uh, once the startup becomes great it will generate a lot of amount of money and everybody will get sufficient amount okay till then you have to focus on bootstrapping and each and every bootstrap business is one of the highest invested startups in the world the highest investment often goes to the ones who are bootstrap so bootstrapping is the key you have to invest all your revenue into the startup again so that it can flourish the fourth one is market size they will analyze what is the market size you are catering to fortunately for optometrists this is very very much positive point because we have a large market size everybody is having nowadays uh, issues with their eyes so you can directly go okay i need to open a chain of this and i'm already running this i need this much funds and this is the market size of indian people who have some difficulty reading or some difficulty uh, suppose we say blurring of vision so they will easily analyze market size they will do some research then they will contact you okay we need to invest this much amount of money regarding your startup as i already said remain self funded for as long as possible the more you delay investment the larger investment you'll get never ever hurry for investment this is the most common mistakes all the entrepreneurs make what they do is they think uh, getting funding is the goal no that is not the goal that is just a milestone and you are never in hurry for a milestone you are always in hurry for the goal your goal is the success of your business for the success of your business you should and always and always bootstrap and remain self funded for as long as possible whenever you are pitching your idea whenever you are showing your idea to someone you have to sell the problem you solve not the product suppose uh, i am talking about vision therapy software so i will only talk about all the eye related problems that can be cured by vision therapy and talk about empathy i'll talk about asthenopia okay then they will realize this is the bigger problem then i say no no this is we have a solution for this you don't need to worry so they will uh, already get an idea of what i am selling or what what i have in my services so now how to utilize this worldwide pandemic i have included this slide as many of you must be practitioners right now and having your own optometry setup or any practice or must be associated with some hospitals you can recommend to them either i have compiled a few ideas that you could achieve and which we are already currently doing so that you can utilize this time of pandemic everybody is sitting at home sitting at home we could do a lot much more than we think we should during the pandemic you can increase brand presence how to increase brand presence everybody is at home everybody is on the internet just increase your ads over the internet increase your content over the internet the more content you feed to the customer the more they will remember your name the more your name they will remember the more your brand presence will be made next one is improve customer relations you are at home you have nothing else to do you are free nowadays so what you can do is you can call up all your patients okay how are you doing okay is it fine how is the exercise is going how is the patching going uh, are you wearing your spectacles that i prescribed is there any more difficulty what would the patient feel the patient will feel okay the practitioner cared for me the practitioner is like my family doctor so what would he do he will always come back to you as soon as the lockdown ends he will come back to you only 
you advise him okay whenever the lockdown and i will take a follow up so whenever the lockdown and you are ready with the business the business keeps running to you the patient keeps running to you then now the third point is work on feedbacks received this is the most important uh, point i have been emphasized since uh, the beginning of this presentation you have to work on all the feedbacks each feedback is a feed forward and nowadays also even if i receive any feedback from any patient saying i am having this difficulty over the therapy i will just write it down and sit with the engineers and decide what we could do to overcome this we need to convert every feedback into feed forward only then we can be the leaders next is you could conduct webinars suppose you are an optometric practitioner you have to conduct webinars even if you are student we have a place for you as well you could conduct webinars you could share your knowledge you must be good at something share that video whatever you are good at share that like you are teaching a 6 year old child only then you would be a master in that once you teach someone you become a master next is encourage work from home what i mean by encouraging work from home you must be having your staff your staff is sitting at home you are also thinking okay we are not getting anything what would we do no encourage them to work from home how can they work from home you encourage them to learn new skills you encourage suppose you have somebody who does your refractions you encourage them okay till the time i am going to give you classes and i am going to teach you this and this so that whenever the lockdown ends you come up with a new skill you come up with uh, the contact lens fitting you come up with contact lens care and then the patient will be more skilled for you and more beneficial for you next one is you can learn new skills suppose you are specialized in contact lenses right now but during this pandemic you utilize the time you learn from others there are great webinars happening by ibits as well you can utilize them and you can learn new skills then you whenever the pandemic is ends you are ready with a new skill to provide to your patients you have a new service to provide to your patients in your area you will be the king in your area only if you keep innovating and with the last point i'll say focus on innovation always improve 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 if you have optometry practice if you are in a corporate setup if you are anything always focus on innovation i remember i was posted in a optical store and what i did i was not the owner there i was not concerned with how much they are getting or not okay that's the point but what i did i went to them i said okay you are not having a patient record whatever you write to the patient the patient will take that and goes back home what happens to that record how you cannot uh, do the research you cannot see which patient was that suppose the patient loses the slip what would you do you will do you have to do the refraction all again so i created a a uh, patient record card for them which they still utilize by now and initially they were promoted way to a higher level than only why because i showed that i am focusing on innovation you should focus on innovation if you are working with somebody else if you are working with uh, somebody else a startup or professional setup you should give your best you should think what you could do to improve that we all say okay my institution is not so good it's having this difficulty this is just think for what you could do that would be the next big thing and i am pretty sure that whenever the founders get in touch with you they will try to contact you and then have a talk with you now optometry has a huge potential for entrepreneurship this is a huge open field i've seen this uh, suppose if you count the number of independent optometry clinics around your area it will i'm sitting here at home i can easily say it will be one two or five at max nothing more than that and if you consider any other profession suppose i said dentist there will be a lot of dentists in the city but independent optometric practice will not, not be as such so there is a huge potential waiting for you and i would like to say the future belongs to you so you all must be waiting for the mantra as he said he'll say some mantra what he doing he is already teaching us no i'll give you the mantra i was just trying to teach you and give you the all the basics and all the glitches attached to this first and foremost is you should never be afraid to take risk the moment you decide to be an entrepreneur there is no scope for you to avoid risk you should take risk there would always be risk there would always be bad times and good times you should went through them and you should go and see what you could do what you could achieve you should always be optimistic next is create an asset light model what i mean by asset light model suppose this is a pandemic going on everything is shut up okay so during the shutdown people are facing huge losses but i can probably say that qrc is facing zero loss why because we have a asset light model what is asset light model suppose i take example of uber what does uber do 
Uber provides you a service where he arranges a cab driver. There is not a single cab owned by Uber. Suppose uh, in the current condition, if there's, there are cabs being owned by Uber, then Uber had to pay their EMIs or anything or to the drivers also. But because Uber has no interest attached to them, what Uber provides is service only. Then Uber provides you with a driver. He just connects you with a driver, a, a customer to a driver. It's just that. So its asset contains nothing else. No, no other thing is required for them to run. They all need just an office and all the customer base that they have. They can utilize the data. Now Reliance Geo's founder, Ambani, once said that uh, data is the new fraud. With data, he means all the data of uh, the individuals around us. So with data is being accepted by Ubers also. So Uber arranges you the drivers only, not the cabs. So that is an asset light model. Think of any asset light model, only that will flourish. Oyo owns no single hotel chain. Uh, only now it started to own. Earlier there was no single hotel owned by Oyo. Oyo was only arranging you a couple of arrangements there for the hotel. So create an asset light model. Always never ever focus on resources. You should not be focusing on expenses. Okay, I need a huge office. I need this and that. No, you should always be focusing on asset light model. Third one is improve people's skills. Improve how you talk with your, the members around. How would you do that? Do as much mistakes as you could. Don't be afraid of anything. Go and talk to people randomly. Go and talk whatever you feel like. Whatever they say, take their feedback and improve. Always improve your public skills. Always improve your people's skills. You need to keep learning. Everybody learns from everyone and everything. Now the next point is choosing the right team members. There's a famous quote which says, A class people chooses A class people, whereas B class people chooses C class people. So you have to choose the right team members. You have to choose the best. Only the best one can choose the best. So you need to see what is the best thing I can provide to the patient. Who's the best one who can cater to their needs? I will arrange them. Suppose you have an optometer set of boots uh, currently not providing ocular history. So you could see who's the best one around you. You can arrange him uh, someday, like on Mondays, you have to sit onto my clinic. Then on Mondays, he'll be sitting at your clinic and you have the best to provide to your patient. You have a service added of ocular history. And under ocular history, also you have the best one. So you need to choose the right team members only. Fifth one is use available resources to create best out of it. Never run for funds, never. You should never be running for anything expensive or anything that you see, okay, this is lucrative, no. Always focus on whatever you're having. Suppose I'm having this much space, how can I utilize this? How can you utilize this to create the best out of it? First, create the best out of that. Even then, if it does not work, then you should think of something else. You should be always in an asset light model. You should never go directly, okay, I need 20 lakhs for setting up an optical, no. This is not what you require. You can see what all you have. Next one is the world is moving. So you should always focus on innovation and research. I have been saying this uh, since a very long time that you should be focusing on innovation and research because that is what keeps you in business. Otherwise, you'll be gone. You uh -huh. never go to the same practitioner who was there five years back providing that, that kind of medicine only. No, you always need the updated one. Same goes with your patients. They also need the best thing. So you need to provide the best and in order to provide the best, you have to keep innovating and keep researching further. And you have to stay flexible. You should be flexible about changes, what all you need to do, what all the changes required, what are the feedbacks, you should improve on that. And you have to create automation system within the organization. The organization should run with or without you. It should be only your uh, leadership that keeps you, that keeps them in place. You should be somebody playing the orchestra. Not you should not be playing the guitar or you should not be saying no. The orchestra, uh, orchestra should play without you, but you need to sit at home and see how they are doing. You need to be with them and then see their, how they are doing. You need to be the leader, not a boss. So you need to create an automation system that runs with or without you, uh, whether you are available there or not. Now the second last point is you can start at any age. Uh, how many of you heard about Kylie Jenner? Kylie Jenner is one of the youngest billionaires. And many of you must have gone to KFC. KFC's owner who was Kennedy's. So the Kennedy's was 
the uh, old man who was not having much resources also he opened up a small shop then he got the idea he provided the best to his uh, customers then he flourished his uh, practice over but i'd say the business so last point is you should learn from everyone and everything each and everything teaches you i can say this blindly why because i have focused and i have seen that whatever happens around you each and everything is motivating and everybody look from the the geniuses they learn the geniuses they learn from the mistake of others so always focus on what you can improve how you could learn further how you could do much more than your capacity you should always be striving for much more now i would like to quote an innovative idea which solves real world issues and a visionary team can guarantee 100% total success you can note this point and if it is not proven you could come at me any time i'll be sharing my email id and the this is what takes you to success you need an innovative idea which solves real world issues and visionary team which can guarantee you 100% total success only the, how many of you know him he is steve jobs the founder of apple he said i'm convinced that what that about half of what separates successful entrepreneurs from the non successful ones is pure perseverance you have to keep moving you should never stop you should never quit even uh, he was uh, kicked out of his own startup he was kicked out of apple then what he did he did not stop there he created pixar so then they the apple again hired him and he was then again the founder so by the time he was there he did not stop he keep moving so by keeping moving you uh, create innovation you create new things so it's not about resources it's all about passion and ideas it's not about how much you need to invest it's all about how much time how much energy and how much passion are you going to invest in them just for example many of you might be aware hp google microsoft and apple all were started in garages right so they did not go to their dad saying okay i need a office first of all and then i need this then i need computers then i need uh, uh, the manpower working for manpower i need this 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 no start from what you have look at all the resources that you got each and everything around you teaches everything and each and every person is an opportunity you could learn from them you could and uh, do your best and you can use all the your resources around you and include your passion and ideas that enough you need not much and this is where curiosity started this is where we started we we did not have any office at first we recently started an office and we are now running in six countries but in our initial days we did not run for offices we did not run for any other thing we kept our meetings our meetings will be done in this park there was a small park around my house i used to keep my meetings there only so it was where curiosity started So thank you everyone. I am Optum Puneet. You can contact me via this phone number or email ID. If you have any questions, you know, I would be love, loving to answer them right now also. And if I ever forget, you could write down them to me. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. That was uh, a great session. So uh, shall we discuss some questions? Yeah, sure. Would you like to read them from the chat box, or would you uh, like me to read them? Actually, I'm interacting via the phone, so if you could read them, it would be better for me. It would oh, not sure. take much. Ah, uh, sure, sure. So, ah, uh, Mr. Hari Bahadur Sharma has a question. As a young entrepreneur, how do we tackle with old style practitioners who does not want you to succeed and will not support you in your vision and mission? You have your answer in the question itself. They are the old ones, so they will uh, be stuck in their own modalities only. You need to see. what's moving forward you need to see what's the new in the market you need to work on that and by that you will be the only one providing that services remember the older he is he want to be as flexible as you he want to be as risky as you because now right now you have a huge pool you could do anything you could start a contact lens practice and he even we do notice him he is doing sclerals or not if not you start doing sclerals if you can add specialties you can shift you can shift easily compared to him so you have an advantage over there so you can easily flourish your optometric practice you just have to look at all the optimistic uh, prospect of that 
Okay, I hope that answers your question, Mr. Hari Bahadur Sharma. The second question we have is from Mr. Sh Samar, who asks, in small city, nobody wants to wear contact lenses. Then how to grow contact lens practice? Okay, so in small city, nobody wants to wear contact lenses. Then what you could do is you need some volunteers. Gather some volunteers, provide them with contact lenses at your cost. They should not be paying anything. They are your... Uh, marketing gimmicks so you provide them with contact lenses earlier they were on glasses they run around the village they run around the place and they say okay it is so fine i can see i don't have to even uh, wear the spectacles it's so good so via their response they will generate referrals with you so all the patients will then come to you saying i need the same thing that this person is wearing i need the same thing only i need that contact lenses then you see you are improving the awareness also Um, thank you, sir. That I hope that answers your question, Mr. Summer. So similarly, we have another question from Mr. Satyan Kumar Jha, who asks if you could share your experience to, uh, of starting QRC. You must have experienced some instructions by well-known individuals who is already established in the market. And how do you tackle that? Yeah, definitely. As I heard, they said you should never look at the competition. There were people who did not wanted me to start. There were many, many objections, but your focus should be clear. You should be clear that you are risking everything for a vision. That vision you should be achieving. So I keep moving forward. I do not uh, take them seriously. You should just keep moving forward and tackle them by ignoring them and improving on your feedbacks. That is what you could do. They will be concerned about you only and you will be concerned about winning only. So you will be winning on that hand. Okay, so uh, could you elaborate on the problems that you had faced uh, while starting QRC? So I'll begin with the first and foremost one, which was funds. So as I said, everybody needs funds. Everybody was curious how to get more funds. Where can we gather more funds? Right? So what I did, I step out. I look for all the family members that I can have some money from. I landed some money and then I got some money from friends also. After that, I think, okay, now this much money is also sufficient for me to start. Then I started that. After starting, then I realized, okay, I need some running cost also. Okay, so it is not like you need 10 lakhs for opening an optical and after that you could just say it easily and you say, okay, now the revenue keeps generating. No, it's not like that. You need some running cost also. You need to pay the electricity bill. You need to pay the water bill. You need to pay the staff. So you need to arrange for that also. So for that, what we did, we started bootstrapping, as I said. Whatever revenue is generated, you just put that directly into the startup. You Reduce your expenses. As I showed you, we used to have meetings on the uh, benches of the park. We never had an office till two to four months. After that, we thought, okay, we have uh, quite a staff we have hired and we need to make them sit. And then we had a small office in the city. Now we have shifted to a bigger one, but that's uh, the main cost is always and always the fund. So you should keep decreasing your expenses and increasing your chances. So that is the first and foremost. Second one is obstruction from the leaders everybody wants you to grow but nobody wants to see you grow much more than them so they will always obstruct you what you should do is you should ignore them and you should be doing your thing you should be taking feedbacks and improving in yourself only you will uh, you will be getting both of them you will be getting a good person also you will be getting a bad person also it's with time that you realize who's with you and who's with you know, not with you so you have to see and then you can go further. Then the next thing which comes up is legalities of the business. If you open any private limited company, then you have many uh, legalities attached with it. So you need a uh, legal advisor, a CA, always at your need, always a handy to you. So we hired one and it was quite costly, but you need to take care of that also. And you need to prepare a business plan so that you can be running seamlessly. Nobody could interrupt you. So these are all the main steps that were uh, holding us behind, but we overcome those. And now we are around a team of 20 members now in QRC. Uh, and uh, could you uh, just also uh, tell us about how you got the idea of starting QRC? Yeah, definitely. So during the idea session, what happened was I was sitting in the OPD. And I was in the initial years of my optometrist learning. So what happened? There was a patient. 
a patient in the hospital the patient came and sit on the chair the optometrist examined okay this 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 then he sent in from the uh, ophthalmologist and the ophthalmologist again examined her he found her okay fundus was normal everything was normal but vision was not improving i was there when the reflection was being done i know the vision was 624 and then they said okay your fundus is also normal no other pathology i can find you you should just go out then i went to the practitioner i said ma'am what's the issue why are you not entertaining that patient do we not have any therapy that we can or any eye drops or anything that can improve him they said no there comes a thing which which is known as vision therapy but which is quite costly in india because it has it is developed in somewhere else and we need to buy this even there if there is some indian version they also keep the same cost or even the higher so it is not affordable either by the patients or by the practitioner and takes up a lot of time so i sat with one of my professor professor masiu jamal sir and with them i developed this software and then i thought okay i can do this and then i what uh, as i was saying you need to take all your resources and then arrange and then i contacted my friend who was a software engineer he said we need to develop a vision therapy software because it is available but it is not being provided to the patients around why because it is much costly so i have reduced the cost and improved the all the uh, margin to the practitioner only so the practitioner gets more margin than the company but that's not the issue until then uh, until and unless the patient is getting cured so that's how cures is started in a hospital setup by an employee patient Okay, and uh, Miss Uma Maheshwari has a question. If um, uh, you would like to share about the app that you had made, yeah, the app was named as Optocal. It was made because there was a, a day called Innovation Day in Amity University. So I sat down with one of my classmates, Jitendra Rathi, and I thought, okay, I need to develop an app. He said, what kind of app are you looking for? I said, what's the problem in the class? Everybody gets tense when. they receive some transposition to do whenever i receive a project and whenever i receive assignments saying you need to do 100 transposition i my mind gets stuck if um, i often mistake in plus and minus and i said there could be similar mistakes being done by the practitioners also that's why they avoid transposition sometimes the corporates provide them with a conversion table you must have seen but uh, most of the time they neglect them they ne used to keep it somewhere else and whenever the patient is nearby you never think of them so, so i thought there should be something handy there should be something that you just enter the power and your result is with you uh, in front of you so that's how i came up with the idea of octocal and i developed it so under that you could have your transpositions done and the second thing is you enter your contact lens parameters and then you could see which one i need to fit which is the trial lens power i need to enter okay i can I share that that. i'm sorry i can give you the link of that after the session uh great that would be great and uh, thank you so much for your answer sir um, that was a great session and i'm pretty sure that all my audiences also agree with me so i would like uh, you to share your experience uh, on the session yeah definitely even i love the idea when i first see that ibits are organizing so wonderfully arranged and the organized structure that you guys have made up a uh, a whatsapp group then you are emailing each of them separately also you are taking up so much stress on to you to provide them with this learning opportunity and for the practitioners like us to interact with them and have a good conversation and interactive session sitting at our homes which is a luxury nowadays so thanks to you thanks to you and the team and special thanks to i would like to extend uh, the janak podal mr janak podal he has been very very supportive and Andy with me, so thank you everyone. Thank you to the teams. Thank you to Ibis and to all the ones who came here Monday afternoon to learn about entrepreneurship in optometry. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you, sir. sir. On behalf of Ibis and our audience, I would like to thank you for your time and the lovely experience and knowledge. And also, I would like to thank our lovely audience for being so supportive and attentive. Stay tuned for more sessions and programs. And on that note, I would like to end the meeting. Thank you all. Bye everyone.